the Arctic Circle and the far north coast of Norway is a region known as NATO's left flank. This seemingly peaceful area of rivers, forests and fjords has a nearly 200 kilometer frontier with Russia. Patrolling this border is one of the toughest postings in Norway's army. Soldiers work through the endless sunlight of Arctic summer into the near total darkness of winter. Yeah, that's a real winter. Along the border, uh, my record is minus 54, and that's uh, quite cold. Uh, I've been on exercises for over a week with uh, not warmer than 30. So, uh, minus 30. Minus 30. So, um, it's an interesting area. <laughs> Major Michael Rosmara is chief of staff of the Norwegian Border Guard. Out of 500 soldiers, just 16 are women. But this tough, male-dominated arena is now the centre of a radical gender experiment. The aim is to double the number of women in the military. We would like to choose from the most motivated men and women because we think that we cannot afford in a modern, modern armed forces to not use the competencies that both genders have. Norway's Defence Minister Ina Eriksson Soreyada is leading the charge. At 38, she's a key mover and shaker in NATO. The new emphasis is on rapid reaction forces, with armies specialising in computer technology, advanced weapon systems and on-the-ground intelligence. She says Norway won't find the specialists it needs without recruiting far more women. The threat, the complexity is so much different today than it was 10 to 15 years ago. That means that the demands, the needs are so much different now that we need to recruit from the whole cohort and the competencies of the co whole cohort. The army hopes it's found the answer to that way up in the Arctic. The county of Finnmark was only settled in the 19th century when Norwegian pioneers came to farm near remote Russian villages. We've come here to see the program in action. It gets cold out there, apparently. Everyone wears the same uniform, and what's underneath doesn't matter. The only thing soldiers are judged on is performance. The only thing they're guaranteed is respect. That's what recruits like Marlon Celius like about it. We, not, we don't focus on like female and male. We are just uh, we're one team. Everyone does the same job. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's not a problem at all. And you do all the same work, no favours given? Yeah, we do the same work. There's, uh, there's no difference. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. You do exactly the same thing. Unlike the men, Marlon is a volunteer. Norway has mass conscription for males over 18, though only the most motivated are chosen to serve. For many young males leaving school, a year in the army is a rite of passage. Marlon applied to join and requested a post in the Border Patrol. I wanted to come here. Yeah, why? Uh, it, um, it's really beautiful, it's challenging, and uh, it's a great place to uh, serve. There's no fortified border, just a river and a few landmarkers over an area rich in untapped minerals. As tensions rise between NATO and Russia over Ukraine, the job of keeping the peace here is as much about diplomacy as force. The army wants the best people doing it. In this battalion, gender simply isn't an issue. Men and women don't just train together and work together, some even sleep together. 
Since 2008, they've been bunking in the same rooms. <laughs> it's 6am and Henrietta Hummel is starting another demanding day. She shares this dorm with three young men and their smelly socks. But she prefers it to being segregated with other women. Now we get to know each other faster and then we work better together. So uh, it's positive here. <laughs> now, a group of boys together can be pretty disgusting in hygiene and everything they do. Yeah, I've seen different things. <laughs> no, it's... They, they have their own way of doing things, boys. Each morning begins with a bleary-eyed breakfast and wash-up. It's more like a group house than an army unit. And they've learned not to expect Henrietta to clean up after them. They understand that I'm not their mother. Come on. She's part of the K-9 unit that patrols the border with sniffer dogs to stop unauthorised crossings. Her roommate, Peter Kjorstad, says it's really not an issue to share with a girl. Well, I think it's OK. I don't really notice it that much anymore. And it's our, part of our daily routine now. And, uh, well, she's one of the guys, so... It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't become one of the girls then? Yeah, well, maybe sometimes she needs some uh, company as well. With <laughs> They're soon on duty. What again? Or, or, or. Sit now. Okay. Da er dagen i dag. Det var som vi snakket om i går. Lufting først, og så kommer vi til å stikke ut og trene rundene før vi skal trene etter passik. They spend several hours a day marching along the hills and river with their dogs. What's his name? Nemo. 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 Yes. Finding Nemo. Yes, like fish. <laughs> He's a good dog? Yeah. Yeah. He's doing his job very well. <laughs> For women like Henrietta, joining the army isn't a lifetime career. As with the male conscripts, it's something different to do before university. Rather like a gap year without the sex and drugs. Yeah. I want to test myself as well, mm -hmm. so this was the place to go. <laughs> Finally, I got to test myself, so yeah. And how are you it going? Right place. How's the test going? It's good. We have done a lot of different things so far, mm -hmm. so uh, I at least got to test myself the way I wanted to, both physically and mentally. <laughs> This was the first battalion to introduce shared dorms. With so much work in the field, it just felt like a logical step. It started because of uh, the mission on the border. We do have to live together because we are solving the mission in tents, in small cabins. We do need to live together out there, so why don't we start in here uh, from the beginning? It soon became clear that the closer they lived, the less they were like hormonal teenagers. There's nothing special about it anymore. So the tension between the sexes is, is not there. And it's becoming a template. And what's happening in this remote region is now being watched very closely around the country. Because next year, Norway is going to start a much bolder experiment. It's going to become the first NATO power to introduce mass conscription of women. Both duties, obligations and rights should be equal for both sexes. 
I think it's a great advancement and I do think that we are seeing also over time a steady increase in the number of women wanting to join the military and we also to my to my great joy see that we also have more and more women in the armed forces who like to be there more and more. Norway has long been embarrassed by the male domination of its military. Fewer than one soldier in ten is a woman. That's in stark contrast to the rest of society where generous parental policies have enabled women to enter all walks of life. Conservative Party leader Anna Solberg is Norway's second female Prime Minister. Most of her ministers are women, from finance to defence. Hi, my name is Inger Lode, and I'm founder of Tropp 15 and KNM Harald Hofagre in Stavanger. New recruitment ads for the army don't focus on how you can fire guns and blow stuff up. Women talk about the skills they've learned to help their fellow soldiers. The most important thing I've learned through my training in the Forsvaret is to keep together, to work together as a team, to make sure you follow the work you've given, so that you can be a representative for each other and take care of each other when you're in the same place. The first It takes a special determination to leave the bright lights of Oslo for a place like this. Cecil Slastad and Ingun Martinsen are stationed at a remote observation post on this wind-battered mountain. Some of their friends thought they were mad joining the army, but they were also impressed. I think they thought it was very tough. It's not very... Uh... In my friend group, it's not normal, so they thought it was pretty cool, though. So. Mm -hmm. Got to learn to fire guns and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how have you found it? Has it been tough? Yeah, it's been very tough, but uh, it's... Um, you've learned a lot. When the sun comes out, it's a very different picture. You can see why some teenagers are so keen to come here. Sissiel and Ingun, who are now 20, are about to finish their service and go to university. But over the past year, they've been promoted to running the post, meaning they give orders to the boys. Today, they're breaking in the latest batch of conscripts. There are two fish in 1990. Then we go down to the plateau. Mm. går vi ner till Ferista och följer längs eh, till 390. Så går vi tillbaka till 382 ja. och tar Lillesand på väg upp. Yes. I don't think they have uh, any negative thoughts about it really. Uh, as long as we're doing our job correctly and Well they have no choice do they? No. <laughs> Sharing quarters with the boys took a bit more getting used to. It's, uh, it's okay, but it's uh, a little bit weird sometimes when you have to change clothes. But you are incredibly outnumbered by men, particularly up here. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. So how is that? Uh, it's, uh, um, it's okay, but uh, sometimes uh, I miss my girls at home and I'm very happy to have uh, Ingen uh, up here with me. So, uh, when we're watching television or something, it's uh, Top Gear all the time. And, uh... <laughs> there are strict rules about dorm sharing. No sex, no alcohol, and no sharing bunks. The males have to watch their language and behaviour. If any young recruits form relationships, they're separated. It works. The incidents we have had, and we haven't had that many, but it has never been together with the people living on the same room. <laughs> the real incidents often happens on off-duty combined with alcohol. I would hasten to say that we also have issues with sexual harassment. I will not not at all deny that. Um, we do see positive development, which I'm very happy to see. 
but we need to focus on these issues on a top level. It's not enough to, to do this on a lower level. I have to focus on it and military leaders in, in all levels have to. So we need to get rid of it. The key to Norway's success is that the army doesn't leave it to the girls to sort out problems. Unlike the British military tradition, there isn't a big gulf between officers and recruits. Part of Major Osmara's job is spotting problems before they start. Oh, that's Tullyak, also Sonvare. The dog is out there, I was on it. So I think for all spectrum, the exact the same spectrum for the on Gutterman, there are no other Gutters that are pillar rotten in physical form. Yeah. De tiltagen som har varit uh, gjort. Be there. Talk to them. Talk to your soldiers. I'm not about anyone. I'm a soldier with a mission. And I got my mission. And my mission is to take care of my soldiers. And together with them, solve the mission. And I have to be there with my soldiers, not about them. That's now at the core of officer training. The new head of Norway's military academy and officer candidate school is Colonel Ingrid Gerida, one of the country's most decorated soldiers. Leadership is all about building healthy cultures. And to build healthy cultures, you have to respect uh, every single person, men and women. And then there is a zero tolerance for harassment, whether it's, it's about gender or sex or, or, or other things. To advocates of equality, Ingrid Gerrida is the proof that gender shouldn't matter. She rose through the ranks to become commander of all Norwegian forces in Afghanistan. Some of her frontline soldiers were women. They've been integrated into combat roles since 1985. <laughs> We've had them on the front line in Afghanistan and, uh, and most other operations we've uh, participated in uh, during the last uh, decades. As long as they have the standards as their colleagues, uh, they are part of the units and, uh, and, and I really can't say that there was a woman or there was a man. They, they do the job they are given and uh, uh, work well. It's striking just how relaxed the border guard has become about gender. Every Saturday it continues its tradition of swimming in the icy Barrett Sea. Clothing is optional. And yes, the female recruits do this too, though understandably not when our television crew is lurking. Well, this is ridiculously cold swimming weather, but the astounding thing is that this is the height of summer up here. They continue doing this right through the Arctic winter, when temperatures drop as low as minus 35. This is one of the most hardcore training grounds for young recruits, men and women. Not every part of the military is so keen to embrace gender neutrality. Norway's Navy, for example, won't allow dorm sharing. Well, I think that uh, when you introduce something new, there will always be reservations in some places. Uh, I think that what we are seeing now, for instance, in our special forces, uh, who have now established their own female uh, troop, for a better recruitment uh, to the armed, the special forces as well. It's a very good example of an environment where you, five to ten years ago, would probably not see this at all. So things are developing, uh, and they're developing in the right direction. So you're not going to force the Navy to, to force men and women to share banks together on ships? No, we won't. And we won't order any units to have so. They need to figure out themselves what is the best way to include both genders. Uh, and now that we're introducing uh, the, the general conscript, they will all have to step up to the plate and say, what can we do to best uh, make this work? 
Ja, jeg vil anbefale kvinner å melde seg inn. Du lærer veldig mye, og det er en veldig spennende tid, og du får veldig mange venner, og forsvaret har mange muligheter. Det var en god tid. I made a lot of friends. Hannes Asplund, now 26, spent a year in the army when she was 23. She loved it until one day almost ruined everything. Det var när vi var i var på fält i Bode i september 2011. Var en fältövelse där, var jag blev tvungen till att bade naken foran 30 medsoldater og fire befal. Hva har du følt om det? Jeg ble veldig redd og veldig lei meg. Jeg trodde ikke at de hadde lov til å tvinge noen til å gjøre det. Og det gikk langt utover mine intimgrenser, så det satte sine spor. But if you're serving together in the army, don't you have to do the same things? Jo, vi må gjøre det samme, men det var ikke alle guttene som hadde lyst til å bade heller. Og det er greit, det skal være likestilling, men det her handler ikke om likestilling. Det handler om at man blir pushet over sine intime grenser. Og hvis vi hadde badet med klær på, med undertøy på, så hadde det vært helt greit. Men det at vi skulle bade nakne, gå ut i vannet, vaske oss nedentil og under armene foran andre, det synes jeg var, ja, det var mildt sagt drøyt. Finn fram kart og skrivesaker. The latest intake to the border battalion shows how far the army still has to go. Most of the new platoons are all male. Out of 270 fresh recruits, only five are women. It will be a long battle to double the number of female soldiers. The tasks are rarely glamorous or well paid or easy. Henrietta has been on duty for 14 hours and there's still work to be done. We're going to meet up with uh, two guys from uh, a patrol and then we're going to uh, walk along the border and uh, check if uh, everything is alright and that nobody has crossed the border. Uh -huh. Long day, you've been up since six, it's now eight o'clock yeah. at night. <laughs> it's uh, long days in the summer, so uh, yeah, we just have to keep up with it. <laughs> But it's fun, so it's worth it. <laughs> Some critics might dismiss all this as European political correctness, putting ideology ahead of military reality. But the Defence Minister Ina Soreyada from the ruling Conservative Party disagrees strongly. No, I don't think so at all. I think this is important for our society. I think that when you look at a country like Norway, a lot of people, a lot of other countries, think that our wealth mainly stem from oil and gas resources. But it doesn't. It stem from the fact that we have equal opportunities in the workforce. We have most of our women integrated fully in the workforce. That is what contributes to our wealth alongside the oil and gas and natural resources. In countries where you don't include women in the workforce, you will have huge problems with actually extracting all the opportunities and getting welfare and wealth.